Secretary of State Rex Tillerson landed in Japan today, his first trip to Asia as America's top diplomat. He landed in Tokyo late Wednesday and will also go on to visit over the next few days South Korea and China. But some headlines are overshadowing the importance of his visit to a region still rattled by last week's missile test uh, by North Korea. Uh, the Secretary of State appears to be doing things very differently than his predecessors. That's viewed as a virtue in the Trump administration. But uh, the Secretary of State has decided to shun the entire diplomatic press corps, deciding to fly all the way to Asia without any of them on the plane and shunning his press pool, uh, which is dedicated to cover at all times the movements of the Secretary of State, instead deciding to take one reporter one who doesn't normally cover the State Department. Is this strategy? Is this something else? Well, former U.S. Assistant Secretary of State P.J. Crowley is here with us now with some perspective. He's a professor at George Washington University and also the author of Red Line, American Foreign Policy in a Time of Fractured Politics and Failing States. So, P.J., some people might look at this and say, well, President Trump said he was going to upend the Washington narrative, break apart the establishment, not taking the diplomatic press corps. Maybe that's a good choice for the secretary of state. Why does it matter for America's diplomat to travel with the press? Well, I think there's a there's a broader context here. I mean, uh, traveling with the foreign press, it's a chance to amplify both to a domestic audience and to an international audience, you know, what the secretary of state hopes to achieve, what he's doing on behalf of the American people and, and uh, how he's pursuing shared interests you know, with America's friends and allies uh, around the world. But the larger context is a muting of the State Department. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as you know well, uh, you know, Secretary Tillerson has made some brief statements in Germany, in Mexico, here in Washington, hasn't yet had his own, you know, press encounter. Uh, and in, in the absence of a full team, you don't have that, you know, under secretaries of state, assistant secretaries of state, who are themselves going all around the, the world. Bees. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and beginning to articulate, right. you know, what a Trump foreign policy is all about. So there's just this kind of mystery that's overhanging uh, the Trump administration and the State Department as Secretary Tillerson gets started and as the Trump administration begins to flesh out their foreign policy. Well, you know, Madeleine Albright, former Secretary of State, often said diplomacy flourishes in darkness like mushrooms. I'm <laughs> ma mangling the exact quote, but that was the idea, that, that stealth diplomacy can actually be really useful. Why is that not the case in this situation? Well, I think there's a the secretary uh, is finding out that it's very different to be a CEO of a multinational corporation who can f literally fly around the world under the radar and being the secretary of state, you know, the chief diplomat for the United States, representing America, the most the influential the country in the world. Um, and, and the light is just not much brighter. I mean, it's not to say that he won't get coverage. He will. You know, but we, we have this ironic situation, you know, in this global information environment that uh, when he met with, Sec uh, with Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in Europe, um, the, the Russians were far more forthcoming about what was discussed in that meeting, the Americans. And, 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 and absent mm -hmm. his normal megaphone, either the press events that he does or having a travel and press you know, where he can communicate you know, how uh, his trip is going, it, it le will leave someone like the Chinese to fill in the blanks as to what their discussions. And obviously, we don't have the same perspective on some of the key issues that the secretary will discuss. Well, th that's the diplomat in you. We don't have the same perspectives. Um, I, and I've been with multiple secretaries of state as they have argued for uh, American journalists to be in the room because Chinese journalists certainly aren't given the same um, access because it's not viewed as a value in the same way that it is here to have a free press to to buttress the democracy. But but broader perspective here, um, Secretary Tillerson lands in Asia at a time when concern is only increasing about North sure. Korea's uh, nuclear program, its missile development, and the Trump administration is still crafting a policy here. What can he actually say when he's in Beijing, Seoul, and Tokyo? Well, I think. Uh there are no good options when it comes to North Korea. The real question is, you know, wh wh what is the path forward? Everyone seems to be pointing towards the resumption of the six-party process, some sort of dialogue. A big you know, group sort with, of diplomatic process. With North Korea. The dilemma is that North Korea is trying to rewrite the essential bargain that the international community has been negotiating for 
uh, more than 20 years. Uh, the deal has always been that North Korea can have a normal relationship with, relationship with the United States and the world in return for denuclearization. What, uh, what you know, Kim Jong-un is trying to do is say, I want a normal relationship with the world and I want nuclear weapons as the ultimate insurance policy uh, you know, for, for the preservation of his regime. Um, the, you know, the secretary, and, and, and we'll, I, I presume the secretary will be negotiating a early visit by President Xi of China you know, to the United States mm -hmm. next month. Uh, but he'll be looking to see, you know, will the Chinese follow up on the one gesture they've done recently, uh, you know, which is to suspend, you know, coal shipments to North Korea. Will they put in, will they put more pressure on North Korea to come to the bargaining table? You know, the Chinese themselves are very frustrated. You know, um, you know, Kim Jong Un has yet to make a trip, you know, to Beijing. So the, yeah. the Chinese don't necessarily know this guy a whole lot better than we do. No, and. To be to be fair to the current administration, the previous one didn't get very far in any kind of diplomatic outreach to North Korea. Um, the uh, attempts to cut off its missile program through cyber attacks and, and others didn't stop current development. Maybe it slowed right. it. They continue to take Americans hostage. There are two Americans in prison there right now. So this is sort of in some ways either forcing a total change of policy or saying, just keep muddling along here. Well, I think the, the muddling along has been the strategy for the last few years, but the dilemma is the trajectory mm -hmm. that North Korea, as it tests, you know, continues to make progress both on its missiles, and one has to assume... By 2020, in, able in to ...in the hit miniaturization the of a nuclear weapon, so that at some point in time, perhaps in the Trump administration, Kim Jong-un might be in a position to stand up and say, I now have a rudimentary capability with, with the capability to attack the United States, and, and what does a U.S. president, could be President Trump, what does he do about that? Here in Washington, we have two European leaders coming to meet mm -hmm. uh, the president. You have the Taoiseach, the Irish prime minister, tomorrow with the president. And then on Friday, you have the German chancellor. Um, this with the backdrop of, of an administration that's questioned some of the basic foundations, the European Union and, and others that are very important sure. to both of those leaders. When we see Angela Merkel and Donald Trump stand side by side on Friday, what needs to be said? Because there's a lot that was said <laughs> on the campaign trail. It, there a was. lot of criticism of Angela Merkel by Donald Trump. Well, and, and you, you always look to see, you know, what leaders will connect. Uh, and for Barack Obama, you know, uh, he relied very significantly on Angela Merkel. Uh, they had a very good, uh, you know, relationship. Uh, but now with the British preoccupied by Brexit, with Barack Obama having left the scene, you know, the, the primary defender of the existing liberal international order is Angela Merkel. And, and she has, and, and I'm sure will express to the president, concerns about some of the things he said, some of the things he's done. You know, the ban. He's been harshly critical of her you know, on her the, immigration uh, policies. I mean, he's such on a. On immigration policies, on the future of the NATO alliance, on the, on the you know, complexion of Russia. All of these things will be on the table for their discussion. That's going to be a really interesting press conference. Want to be a fly on the wall on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to be at the actual meeting, not the press conference, because. Uh, the most powerful woman in the world, as some call her, sitting down that's fair. with Donald Trump. Um, it'll be interesting to watch. P.J. Crowley, thank you very much you. Right, for your time here.